How do you get crispy, crunchy, juicy fried chicken without adding any carbs? It's actually easier than you think. To get that perfect crunchy breading on fried foods, we have lots of different options to choose from. From pork rinds to Parmesan cheese, I'm putting some of the common ones to the test to see which keto breadcrumb option is the best for making fried chicken worthy enough to be on the menu at KFC. But first, let's prep our chicken. I have a pack of bone-in chicken thighs. I really wanted drumsticks, but like everything else, it seems to be in short supply. Really hope they didn't start breeding chickens without legs, because maybe that's why. After you pat them dry, season both sides with kosher salt. Whatever cut of chicken you do use, just keep the skin on because that's gonna make your chicken crispy. It's up to you whether you wanna remove the bone in your chicken thigh. Salting your chicken is crucial for the most tender, flavorful chicken. After they're seasoned, we're gonna set them aside at room temperature for around 30 minutes or just put them in the fridge overnight. This is optional, but I do like seasoned chicken, particularly KFC's Secret Spice Blend, so I'm gonna try and replicate it today. You'll need three tablespoons of smoked paprika, a tablespoon of garlic salt, a tablespoon of ground ginger, a tablespoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of ground mustard, a teaspoon of thyme, a teaspoon of celery seed, a teaspoon of oregano. The original KFC recipe calls for two tablespoons of white pepper, which is supposed to be an essential spice, but I didn't have that. It also asks for two teaspoons of basil, which I completely forgot to add, because when you're mixing up a special blend of 11 spices, you're bound to at least forget one of them. Well, at least I am. After you coat the chicken with about half of the spice mix on both sides, it's time for a drink, because all that talk of spices has gone me thirsty. Time for a glass of electrolytes by Element, my sponsor for this video. When you're parched from whisking up a secret spice blend, man, this is giving me tennis elbow, it's important to rehydrate with a science-backed electrolyte formula of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Even better is that Element Electrolytes comes in a variety of tasty flavors like raspberry, watermelon, orange, citrus, chocolate. They even have spicy flavors like lemon habanero or mango chili. Drinking a glass of electrolytes gives me the hydration and energy I need to continue this recipe. And right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. You get to try eight single serving packets free with any Element order. So it's a great way to try all eight of their flavors or just to share with a friend. Go to drinkelement.com slash ketofocus. This deal is only available through my link, so go to drinkelement.com slash ketofocus right after I crown the winner of the best keto fried chicken. Generally, fried chicken is made by coating the chicken with all-purpose flour. Some recipes actually use other components like cornstarch to make it crispy. Both are higher in carbs, causing one piece of fried chicken to have up to 30 grams of carbs in it. I've seen recipes using almond flour, coconut flour, grated Parmesan cheese, lupin flour, lupin meal, which is ground up lupini beans, even pork panko, which is ground up pork rinds. This is my go-to for making crispy chicken tenders or the breading when you're trying to make chicken parm. Today, we're gonna test four of these that I think will give the best crunch to our fried chicken pork panko, grated Parmesan cheese, lupin meal, and protein powder. I have a few extra special ingredients that's gonna go into my egg wash to help give us maximum crunch. Most recipes for fried chicken will have you dip the chicken in an egg wash, which is normally just a couple of eggs whisked together with some water. The problem with using whole eggs is that the fat can add moisture to the crust, so the chicken won't be as crunchy. I'll have a solution for that that I'm gonna share in just a sec. Some will have you dip the chicken in buttermilk and let that soak. Many will soak the chicken in the buttermilk for a long period of time just because the acidity from the buttermilk will help tenderize the chicken, but we aren't soaking it. The buttermilk in this recipe will help change the way the fatty skin interacts with the hot oil. At least that's what Alton Brown says, and everything I learned from cooking was from him or Food Network or just by experimenting. The problem is buttermilk isn't exactly low carb. One cup of buttermilk has 14 grams of carbohydrates. To get around that, we're gonna make our own keto buttermilk by using heavy cream. One cup of that, we're gonna add two teaspoons of white vinegar. Stir it and let that sit for around 15 to 30 minutes, and then you're gonna have buttermilk. This will bring your carbs down to only four per cup. To make the buttermilk wash, add your homemade buttermilk, and instead of using whole eggs, add two egg whites. Using only egg whites, we're able to lower that fat content so that we can get a crunchy crust. Another special ingredient to help coat the crust and form flaky layers is vodka or any neutral spirit. Add two tablespoons of alcohol. The two tablespoons of alcohol will evaporate quickly in the hot oil, so don't worry, you're not gonna get drunk from it. I whisk in a teaspoon of baking powder too, just another element to help give us that crispy, crunchy crust. Moving on to our four breading options, since I'm only testing one piece of chicken at a time to figure out which is gonna make the best 
crispy, crunchy coating, I'm only gonna add enough to coat one piece. But I'll have the full recipe for the best fried chicken on my website, ketofocus.com, as well as down below in the description box. For each, we'll add the breading, baking powder, salt, and reserve seasoning. Since pork panko, lupin meal, and Parmesan cheese are a little bit coarser grinds compared to the protein powder, I'm gonna coat it first with a small layer of almond flour. I'm just hoping the finer texture of the almond flour will help the breading mixture stay on better. Do a quick dip of the chicken into the buttermilk mixture, then coat with pork panko. Next, I fry this in a saucepan filled with avocado oil that's heated over medium heat until it's around 350 degrees. Then add in your chicken, and this is gonna take around 15 minutes to fry. You wanna turn it occasionally just so it doesn't get brown on one side over the other side. And you wanna cook it until the internal temperature of your chicken is 165 degrees. That's when it's safe to eat. You can see here that some of my crust is falling off. This is so disappointing because this mixture is my go-to if you're pan frying chicken for making chicken tenders or any sort of breaded chicken. But I guess not so much for deep frying. It looks crunchy, but just not as much as I would have liked. I see Parmesan cheese used successfully in a lot of breaded chicken recipes like Parmesan crusted chicken or chicken Parmesan. So I have high hopes for this one here. Man, that sure is reacting to the oil. It's really bubbling. I hope this wasn't a mistake. Wow, it's actually not that bad. Some of the breading did fall off, but it looks really crispy. Let's try the lupin meal. Lupin meal is made from lupini bean, which is a bean that's high in fiber, which makes it very low carb and keto friendly. I need to go into the oil. Well, that's not good. The breading is actually lifting off. I've never seen this before. Now onto the protein powder. I don't really know the science behind using protein powder to fry or bread chicken because Alton never uses it. So if you know, make sure you comment down below. The one tip I have when it comes to coating anything with protein powder is to not coat all of your chicken up ahead of time. Otherwise the breading is gonna peel off and the protein powder gets absorbed by the buttermilk too much. Just coat, press it all over and immediately dip in your fry bath. This looks really promising. The breading is actually staying on. Oh my, this is perfect. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. So crunchy and juicy on the inside. Protein powder is definitely the way to go, but I really think that the pork panko and the Parmesan cheese aren't that far off. If you wanna see how to make crunchy chicken strips or a breaded chicken Parmesan, just click right here because I show you how to do it using pork panko.